What up fam, Jay Hine here, Emulator Review, back at you with another video and I am so excited because today I am taking a look at a bunch of video games that came out in 2014. So as 2014 comes to a close and we close the door on that chapter, we move on to 2015, I wanted to take a look back and talk about some of my most enjoyed games. I wanted to do a top 10 list, but that was too difficult for me. I didn't play all the games I really wanted to play in 2014. A lot of games came out that I don't own just yet, so I don't feel like I could give a proper top 10 list overall. So I wanted to talk about my most enjoyed games that happened during this year. And I think 2014, it was a great time in gaming. I think we had a lot of really great games that came out, a lot of interesting new news, a lot of botched and <laughs> incredibly disastrous game launches. There was a whole host of things going on. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in to my most enjoyed games of 2014. Here we go. Jumping right out of the gate comes a really cool game that I had the unique opportunity to do the voiceover work for. This is called Motor Rock. Developed by Yard Team and released at the beginning of 2014, this is a rock and roll racing true successor. Complete with amazing animation and graphics, ample vehicle choice, vehicle weapons like rockets, bombs, destruction, proper isometric camera angle like the original, and the addition of a chase camera now. This game was amazing and in the end it is such a shame. I was thrilled to be a part of it and so happy to have this in my catalog and on my resume but unfortunately the game was way too similar to Rock and Roll Racing and another company that you may or may not have heard of, Blizzard, kind of caught wind of this and decided to put on the brakes and shut this game down completely. It was pulled off of Steam and it's not available for purchase anywhere. I do believe on their website they do offer donations in exchange for the game but it is such a shame that I got pulled. It is a great game and I was thrilled and happy to be a part of it. Snake scores a first place knockout. Tyler finishes second. Murdoch takes a weak third. Next game on my list comes in hot and heavy with the simulator scene. Oh my goodness. Is there a simulator game for everything? Yes. I cannot wait for scissor simulator where you just cut paper. I cannot wait for that. However, this game I got suckered into very early on. It went on sale, I believe a year ago for the winter sale and I picked it up for $3 on a whim and it is fantastic. Of course, I'm kind of biased. I do love cars, obviously, love racers, but I love the whole mechanic aspect of things. Long story short, I did manage a sport compact car shop back in the day and we did stuff similar to this. So it kind of struck a nerve with me and I'm very happy to be going back to the shop, putting the cars in the lift, and doing some work. So what happens is the cars come in, you get a work order, either the customer stating what seems to be the problem, what they think is the problem, or what you need to investigate and find the problem. Once you do, you can get the car up on the lift, start investigating the parts, disassembling, reassembling, taking parts off, and remanufacturing them. It is a ton of fun, and I love it. It's actually relaxing for me. What a blast this is. You can then take the cars out for a test drive to see if they handle properly. You can take the vehicles in and do suspension checks, all sorts of different things. But everything, it's like a puzzle. You have to disassemble the parts in the same order that you would normally do on a car. So if you need to take off axles, well, guess what? You have to take off the wheel and tire. You have to drop the suspension. Uh, and you know, you have to go through that procedure. And you know, if you're not into cars, you may find it a little difficult, but even if you're remotely into cars, I think you're gonna get much enjoyment out of this game. I know I definitely did. From simple oil changes to full on part swaps and remanufacturing and replacing. It's a ton of fun. You go over to your computer and buy parts if you want to, or go to your workbench to fix the parts that you already have. And you have to stay within budgets. You have to make sure that you do that, or you end up paying additional out of your own pocket. So it's very, very cool. And you get an awesome garage to work in. It's just like your ghetto old garage. It's perfect. And it's a ton of fun. Car Mechanic Simulator 2014 on the board. Earlier in the year, Steph and I decided to do a 24-hour stream on my Twitch page. And during that time, we were playing lots of really cool games. Some co-op, some single player. This game here, big shout out to my homie Chad in Portland. He hooked me up with this game. He gifted it to us during that stream to play. He said that we would love it. And this right here, Towerfall Ascension. This is excellent. This is like almost 16-bit style slash 8-bit style. This game is basically an arena battle archery game where you can have 
up to four players battling it out with each other to try to get to the next level. I love the design of this game. I love all the animations and I love that it's an indie game too. Being an indie guy myself, I'm definitely drawn to stuff like this. It's one of those games that gets very exciting very quickly. It's a last man standing type of a deal. So without the four players on the screen, other enemies you have to account for and other teammates or non-teammates that are trying to kill you. It is so much fun and very exciting and it's a great four player sit down at the same room play type of a game. You know, like back in the day when we used to do that. Thank you, Chad, for gifting it to us during that stream. What a great little gem right here. This is Towerfall Ascension. Following suit in the whole 8-bit, 16-bit craze of games coming out in 2014, I cannot make a list without mentioning Shovel Knight. And again, a big shout out to the homie Demez for gifting this game to us during the 24-hour stream as well. Shovel Knight is a true throwback to the early days of console gaming, and it just feels right. If you don't already know, Shovel Knight is a 2D side-scrolling platformer and another fantastic indie game on my list. For me, if you take games like Legend of Zelda, Mega Man, and Contra, and maybe mix in their DuckTales, that's exactly what you get with this game. And to me, everything about it really screams NES. I mean, the color palettes, the text, just everything. It's so perfect and hard as hell. Oh my goodness. And that feels good too, because, you know, games today seem to be so easy and they hold your hand so nice and softly as you cross the street. But this one really doesn't. It throws you into the fire. Good luck, sucker. Oh, you're dead? Well, why don't you go back and pick up all the crap that you lost? Oh yeah, and by the way, you suck. That's exactly how it feels. And I love it. This game's received extremely high praise, being rated super, super high and winning multiple awards, 3DS and Wii U eShop Game of the Year from Nintendo Life, and also Best Independent Game from the Game Awards. I'm just so thankful to have grown up during that time, and I just feel like all the throwbacks to those days is so nice to have on modern systems. Big shout out here to Demez. Thank you for gifting it to me. This has been Shovel Knight. And next on my list, oh gosh. Oh gosh, I think I spent 50, 60 hours. I just sat in my chair. I didn't shower. I didn't eat. I didn't do anything except play Anarchy Arcade. I received an email from the developer a few days before its launch, him saying, I think you'd be into a game like this. I know how you enjoy Steam and that you enjoy Source Engine games. And sure enough, he was right. I feel like I was a child again, discovering Legos for the first time. This is like Sims on crack. It is a sandbox source engine powered game that allows you to create anything you want and I mean anything it has steam workshop support so you can spawn in certain things but it has a whole host of things and everything that you're seeing here now is already built into the game that you can use arcade cabinets pictures all sorts of things now you can create things you can go online spawn in images pictures websites anything you want all the games here are playable they're linkable from the games that are living on my hard drive my music room consists of all different videos that I have on YouTube, online, my music pages, video game remixes, social media, all sorts of stuff like that. This is a place where people can come hang out and just have fun in if they really want to. It is great and I am so addicted to it. I have a tournament and spectating room where people can come in and watch other people play games. You can watch over the shoulder play of people when they're playing their games. It's so cool. So I put lots of cool things in there. I spent tons of time in here. Homage to the AGG crew. Big shout out to all the things there that resemble that. I just got I got carried away and got addicted and I, I don't think I left my room for like three days straight. It was a blast and I loved it. This is a game I really cannot get enough of. It is so fun and it's great to open up the arcade every once in a while and just let people come over and hang out. I love doing that from time to time. This has been Anarchy Arcade on Steam. Oh yeah we're getting closer and closer to my most enjoyed game of 2014 but next here on the list is a speedrunner's dream and wow what a nice polished homage and throwback really to again old school gaming this is nes remix and what a pleasant surprise this was to find thank you nintendo for doing a game like this you guys i want to see games like this come out on your system you guys have such a rich history
history of this, and I'm so glad you're taking advantage of it here with this. This game allows you to go through and try to speed run specific areas on different games, like Excite Bike, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and a whole bunch of other games. And once you play one of the levels and pass that, it then unlocks the next level, and you progress through the levels. It'll have different obstacles like on Donkey Kong. Here, jump over three barrels. If you miss, it quickly restarts you and you just go right again. It, it really is the perfect speedrunning game. Complete with online leaderboard stats, you can compare your times with worldwide records. It's just a very highly addictive game and a true treat to have on the Wii U. If you're a Wii U owner, this game definitely needs to be in your collection. This is NES Remix. If I had to pick a game that had the worst launch this year, I find myself struggling. There were so many bad launches this year for some really, really good games. But if I had to pick a company, I'd probably pick Ubisoft. Their games had some of the worst launches this year, unfortunately. But without all aside, we cannot forget a little gem over here from Evolution Studios called Drive Alone, or I'm sorry, Drive Club. Originally, I saw this game announced back in 2013 and found myself extremely intrigued and highly looking forward to this game. So upon its launch, I was right there day one with my good friend Brandon. Big shout out to him as he gifted me this game to play and we jumped right in on our PS4s to hook up some Drive Club. Except we found out that we couldn't drive together anywhere. Unfortunately for Drive Club, it was already on rocky roads before it was even released. Having quite an extensive delay and pushback, usually that's an okay thing and most gamers are accepting of that as long as we have a nice stable launch. But upon its release, online connectivity was not there. You could not get online and race with your friends at all. For a game that branded itself as a game where you never drive alone, always connected online with your friends and pushed back for so long to get the bugs worked out, this was just a slap in the face. Day one buyers and early adopters were treated with a whole host of bugs, connectivity issues, and instability throughout the entire game. Putting even the multiplayer and online aside, when you race in single player, it goes towards stats that are tracked. However, with the server and connectivity issues, the races that you would do, the points that you would get, would go to nothing if it disconnected from the server, which would happen literally every race. Sometimes I felt like I was playing for no point as my stats would then calculate and then get deleted. And with tracks littered with slaloms, race lines, and speed challenges, this is really quite a shame. But don't get me wrong, Drive Club has probably some of the best graphics I've seen in a racing video game and later on down the road they released a weather patch which has really some of the best weather I've ever seen in a video game period. I had so much fun playing this game and once the online connectivity came back which I believe was a month or month and a half later after its release this game really is a ton of fun. What a shame on the launch though. Either way, racing some exotic cars and multiple tracks, excellent weather conditions, and really fine detailed track and driving physics. This really is a nice balance between a simulator and an arcade racer. And I love it. This is Drive Club. We have finally arrived. Can you guys guess the game that I spent the most time on this year? I know some of you can. Yep, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is the crew, sucker. Yeah. God, I love this game. Now, let me just go on the record and say this is the racing game I have always wanted. This is something that I've been dreaming of. Even back in Dreamcast days, when I was playing games like Crazy Taxi in the city and thinking to myself, man, wouldn't it be cool if you could just drive around an entire city like this? Oh my gosh. Then in Burnout, like, oh, could we get like burnout physics in a game where you just drive around in these areas? Oh man, I'm telling you. The Crew is something that is, in my eyes, it's a magical game. It's so good. I, I love it so much and I cannot get enough of it. It's a game that I crave. I, I, I come home at night after a long day and I say to myself, I want to crew up and we get together with the friends and we play and it's so much fun. Don't get me wrong. If there's a game out there to cause me the most frustration and the most joy ever in my life, this is the game that does it. It has so many problems. Connectivity issues where we all can't see each other's cars in the crew when we get online. Issues with car balancing or lack thereof and an h1 hummer can destroy lamborghinis and ferraris in pvp races i mean the car stats they don't mean shit it really comes down to how does the car feel to you and how does it drive how well can you handle it getting dropped constantly on pc from the server 
constant frame rate dumps, obvious AI placement with traffic around corners on apexes, ridiculous on-rail cop AI, and PvP races with undefined servers where it can't find a host, so we just sit there in the lobby and twiddle our thumbs. So don't get me wrong, it has a ton of issues, but I cannot get enough of this game. Putting yourself in this living, breathing, pretty much entire United States world and driving around like this has really made me fall back in love with all the reasons why I love video gaming and why I'm sitting here right now doing this. To connect and play, achieving goals, mastering a craft, exploring the unknown, bettering yourself and working towards something new. Always evolving, competing and winning and losing and fighting back and accepting challenges. Yes, I could go on, but all of these elements are in this game. And when a game does this for me, when a game forces me and allows me to pick and choose how and when and where and why I play, it's just a great experience. And getting together with friends and going on road trips from one coast to the next takes about an hour and a half, equals out to be some of the best online gaming experiences I've ever had. The problems, yeah, they suck, but the overall experience and at its core, the game we have here trumps all of those. It's not only one of the great this games I played in 2014 and most enjoyed game. This is probably one of the greatest games I've played of all time. <laughs> yeah, it's that powerful. I encourage everyone to check it out. The beauty of these lists is that they're unique to each individual. So this was mine, but I want to hear what yours is. Let me know in the comments below. Let's compare games. I'm curious to what you play too. Maybe some games I still need to check out. Please feel free to join me on all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All links are in the description below. Be sure to subscribe and I hope you all have a fantastic day. We'll catch you on the next video. See you later.